Barakat Yahweh, Barakat Yahweh Shai, Kol Halayim La Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baruch Hakodesh, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Baruch Hakodesh means in the Holy Spirit, <coughs> the Spirit of Truth, the only way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. It's Brother Mathati from the Great Millstone Camp to Branch on Des Moines. And um, not sure what I'm going to title the lesson just yet, uh, but the Spirit literally, you know, um, put this in my spirit, <laughs> you know, put this in my mind. You know, I just, I, I, I just heard a voice in my head and said, he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, you know, and, um, yeah, so without further ado, this is 2nd Edges 13 and 29. It says, Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, man. And that's it. You see, these people are going to be taken back. These people are going to be surprised when the words of the prophets are, 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 are found to be true, man. You see? Because in today's time, man, everybody got a, a platform, whether it be TikTok or Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or whatever the hell it is, man. And everybody um, got something to say. Everybody want to voice their opinion. Everybody want to show forth their unbelief. And it's beautiful, man, because it's showing forth the time that we're in. It speaks about how uh, in the latter days, matter of fact, it's that Timothy. Second Timothy. Yep, this Second Timothy three and one. I think it's another one though. But this Second Timothy three and one. It says, "This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves." And this is what we're seeing on all these different show, uh, social media platforms, man. These people are all about themselves. They're all about me, 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 right? And judgment is going to come upon these people, man, because they have made themselves idols. It speaks about in Colossians, the third chapter. It's Colossians 3 and 5. It says, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry, man. Because these people, seeing what, what, uh, what other people have and, uh, and want to get it, here it is. You got um, a brother uploaded uh, a video. Yesterday, man, I, I think it was um, GMS Watchman, the brother out in New York, man, if I'm not mistaken. Man, I don't remember the brother that uploaded the lesson, but um, it was this nigga woman talking. And she was talking about what, 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 what the nigga woman do out there in Dubai when them Ishmaelites fly them out, you know, uh, out there to the Middle East, man. <laughs> and it's complete and utter madness, man. Right. But she made the statement, well, they go and do what they got to do in order to live the lifestyle they want to live. And, 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 and they want to live that lifestyle because of the things that they see. Because of the vibration of Esau, Edom and what he pushes out to the uh, to the people, man. Live your best life. Right. Hot girl summer. That's why the scripture says she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth, man. See, a lot of these people we're, 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 we're seeing a lot of these people that. That's spewing out madness out of their mouth through their social media, man. These people are already dead. You know, and those things are vexing to see. Those things are vexing to hear. But we got to understand and remember that these people are already dead. They're just filling up the measure of the judgment that the Lord is going to bring upon them, man. But see, they covet these different things that they see. So therefore, they sell their soul. Therefore, they, 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 they do things outside of their morals, man. And what Paul explained that as idolatry. You see, but let's go back. Second Timothy 3 and 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent. And that word incontinent, man. You see, without self-control. <laughs> Intemperate. Right? Doing whatever the hell they flesh calls for, man. It says fierce, despises of those that are good, 
And that's what you're seeing. A lot of these people coming out talking shit against the believers. Oh, well, you believe in this and all the, the believe in that and all that kind of bullshit, man. <laughs> you know? Well, if God put us in slavery and all, the, all this goof ass shit. See, the Lord is going to come and stop all miles, man. Matter of fact, let me hold that. Man, how is it worded? Because I know it's one where it says, every tongue shall confess. Oh, I just grabbed that. This is Philippians 2. In 10, it says that at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Yahweh Shai Mashiach is the Lord to the glory of Yahweh the Father, man. You see, all these uh, 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 weak ass philosophies, man, these false doctrines and these people leaning to their own understanding. And they got their they own thought. All that shit is going to be shut down, man. All that is going to come to naught, you know? Let me see. It's a beautiful one. Isaiah 45 and 23, this was what uh, uh, Paul was quoting. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Surely... Shall one say in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai have our righteousness and strength? Even to him shall men come, and all that are incensed against him shall be ashamed, man. You see? See all these people that's that's, that's talking shit and that's coming up, coming up against the truth? They're gonna be ashamed in that day, man. He's gonna come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, right? But let's go back. Second Timothy 3 and 4. Traitors, heady, high-minded, and once again, you can see that, man. Proud as proud as ever, right? Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the Heavenly Father, you see? Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the Heavenly Father. This is a good one as well. First Timothy 4 and 1, now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, man. So meaning it ain't no persuading these people. It ain't no uh, change in their mind. These people are set in their ways. Right. And it's only going to be in this. And, and this is speaking about guys falling away from the faith. Which is why that Psalm 51 should be a continual prayer each and every day, man. To the true believers, right? But let's go back. Um, Where was I? Oh, I was done in that. Oh, let's go back to the Edris. Second Edris 13. Let's read 29 again. It says, behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, man, as it is written in the book of Wisdom of Solomon. This Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. It says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. Right? It says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. And that's what you're seeing. You're seeing the men out in the highways and hedges telling this devil to his face, as it is written in Isaiah the 13th chapter. It says what? But here it is. You got people. Uh, the camps is the worst thing. Going. The camps make Israel look bad. The camps are you spewing hate. You doing this. You doing all. Shut the hell up, man. See, real soon, all you people's mouths is going to be stopped, man. This is Isaiah, the 13th chapter in the first verse. It says the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. And we're lifting the banner. The banner is these scriptures. The banner is our Lord Yahweh Shah. Because what did it say? 
The scripture says, um, come on now. This is the book of, uh, John 12 and 32. It says, let's see. Yep. This John 12 and 31. It says, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. That's Esau Edom. He's the prince of the power of the air. He's the ruler of this present evil world, man. And when our Lord Yahweh Shah comes, his ass is going to be cast at dawn, man. As it is written in Revelation, the 12th chapter, place shall not be found no more in heaven for this devil, man. Verse 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. That's going back to that second address. When the Lord shall begin to deliver those that dwell on the earth. It starts with this knowledge. It starts with Yahweh Shah being exalted. And we're exalting him in the form of this, what? This knowledge. He comes in a volume of the book. It is written of him. This is the banner that we're lifting, right? It says something lifted up. This is a Hebrew word, nas or nasa, right? It says something lifted up, a standard signal, signal pole, an ensign, a banner, right? What it would tell us in Isaiah, the 11th chapter, in the 10th verse. It says, in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse. The root of Jesse is our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Because who came out of Jesse? King David. Who came out of King David? When you trace the lineage all the way down to our Lord Yahweh Shai, right? Because his father Joseph, his actual father is of the lineage of David. It says, and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign of the people. You see that? Nas. <laughs> right? To it shall the Gentiles seek, and we're, we are those Gentiles. We are those heathen that went astray, man. It speaks about a... Uh, 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 we were Gentiles, led away to these dumb idols where we were led, roughly paraphrasing 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. That's why in 2nd Edges, the 2nd chapter says, O ye heathen, look for your shepherd that shall come at the end of the world, man. Galatians, the 3rd chapter, that the Most High foresaw that he should justify the heathen through faith, said unto Abraham. It's talking about us, man. It says, to it shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be Glorious man. So that banner that we're lifting is our Lord Yahweh Shai. Lift ye up a banner back in Isaiah 13 and 2. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles, man. You see? And that's what we're commanded to do according to Ezekiel the 35th chapter. It says, What? Set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it, man. And that's exactly what we're doing through the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Going back to Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation so far beyond all that they look for, man. The astonishment of him that dwell, the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Because he's coming to bring the destruction, but also salvation, as it is written in the 18th chapter. This wisdom of Solomon 18 and 7. So of thy people was accepted both the salvation of the righteous and destruction of the enemies. And all the unbelievers, they're going to be a part of those that are destroyed. That's what it tells us in 2nd Edges, the 15th chapter. It says, let not the incredulity of them that trouble thee that speak against thee, because all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness, man. You see that? So yeah, it's vexing to see all these people, they got an opinion and all these people got something to say. Hey, but real soon, man, our Lord is going to shut their goddamn mouths, man. Let's go back and excuse my language. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision in a proverb of reproach. This was he who he was talking all that shit against. This was he who, who we was mocking and scoffing, <laughs> right? Hey, that's why it says in Ezekiel, the 33rd chapter, man. Let's get that. This is Ezekiel chapter 33. And 33, straight to the point. And when this cometh to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them, man. You see, because the Lord's prophets, they will be found faithful, man. This is the book of Sirach, the 36th chapter. 
in the sixth verse. It says, show new signs and make other strange wonders. And that's what we're seeing throughout the earth. Different droughts that's happening all over the world, man. Uh, 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 different weather phenomena that's taking place. Different floods, right? Storms and tornadoes and, and fires raging. <laughs> man, the Lord is doing wonders. Glorify thy hand and thy right arm that they may set forth thy wondrous works. Raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Make the time short. Remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire and let them perish that oppress the people. Smite and sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathen that say there was none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. And how are we being gathered? We're being drawn unto our Lord Yahweh Shah by him being lifted. According to Baruch, the fourth chapter says what? That we're gathered together by the word, roughly paraphrasing. So Yahweh Shah being lifted up is what's gathering us, man. That's why it's important that we continue to put forth uh, 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 these lessons. We continue to hit the highways and hedges, right? It says, verse 12, O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is called by thy name and upon Israel whom thou hast named thy firstborn. O be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Fill Zion with thy unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory. Give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. And those prophets are going to be speaking the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shai, according to Revelation, the 19th chapter, man. So the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy. That's our Lord being lifted up. You see, verse 16, reward them that wait for thee and let thy prophets be found faithful and they will be. You see that? They will be. Let's go back to Wisdom of Solomon. It's Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 3. Hey, because it says the strangeness of their salvation, man. Right? Well, what did the... Uh, um... This is the book of... Uh... I think it's Habakkuk. Nope, it's Isaiah. This is Isaiah 28 and 21. It says, For the Lord shall rise up as in Mount Perizim, he shall be wroth as in the valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his strange work, and bring to pass his act, his strange act. And what's that? That's the strangers of our salvation. And that's going into the chariots, man. Second Samuel 5 and 20. And David came to Baal Perizim, and David smote them there and said, Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai hath broke forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal Perizim, man. <laughs> right? Because the Lord went before King David, man. And what I mean by that is he sent the chariots out. Let's see. Salaki, bear with me. Yep, 2 Samuel 5 and 23. And when David inquired. You see? Man, all I had to do was scroll down. Because it says what? That the Lord went before him, right? And, and when David inquired of the Lord, he said, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the top of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. So, so, so what was the sound on top of the trees? It was those chariots going forth, man. <laughs> you see? See, because the Lord is going to defend us as he did in old, in, in old time. It's Isaiah 31. And five, as birds flying, so will Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, Lord of hosts, defend Jerusalem. Defending also, he will deliver it. And passing over, he will preserve it, man. You see? So that's the strangeness of our salvation. It's, the, it's our deliverance into those chariots. Hey, hey, even uh, the apostles. When they see Yahweh Shah beamed up, they were standing there uh, in, uh, marveling, man. Right? Well, these people are going to marvel as well. Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 5, verse 3 now. 
It says, and they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision in a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. <laughs> That's exactly how they looked at us, man. So we, 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 we'll deal with the mocking. We'll deal with the scoffing, man. We know the end result, right? That's why the scripture says what? It's Sirach 9 and 11. It says, envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end, man. You don't know how that nigga going to die. You don't know what calamities the Lord going to bring upon his ass, right? Or her ass. It says, delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in, but remember they shall not go unpunished until their grave, man. Hoo-wee. Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 5. See, and us reading those things, man, hey, that's what allows us to move in fear. You know? We don't, we don't, we don't want to be partakers of that. Verse 5. How is he numbered among the children of the Most High, and his lot is among the saints? Therefore have we erred from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness have not shined uh, unto us, and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. Exactly. Yahweh Shah didn't reveal himself unto them, man. Because here in Malachi, it says the sun of righteousness, right? S-U-N, son of righteousness, right? This is the book of Malachi 4 and 1. It says, for behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven. And that's the day that the nuclear missiles are going to be shot off, man. That's the lake of fire that John seen in the book of Revelation. And we hope to be delivered from that. We hope to see what he saw in Revelation of 15 chapter when he was standing upon the sea of glass, man. And he saw them that had gotten a victory over the beast and over his image and over the name. Roughly paraphrasing what's written. Psalms, the 91st chapter says, only with thy eyes shall thy see the reward of the wicked, man. That's what we're trying to partake in. We're trying to uh, be of those righteous, man, to see the reward of the wicked, right? And also to see the reward of the righteous, man, to be able to receive a crown from the Lord's right hand. It says, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. In the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah, Lord of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as cows of the star, man. Our Lord Yahweh Shah returning, because he's that bright and morning star. What's a morning star? It's the sun. So our Lord Yahweh Shah is the son of righteousness, man. And as it is written, man, he's going to come to our glory, but to their shame. Let's get that. This is the book of Isaiah. Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah, man. We just got to continue on this path. Isaiah 65. Is it 65? Or is it 66? Salaki. Bear with me, Baba Kusha. Man, how's it worded? Man, I know where it's at in my in my Bible. Um Isaiah 66. I just overlooked this lock. Isaiah 66 and 5. Hear the word of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Ye that tremble at his word, they that fear the Lord, according to Malachi, right? Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord be glorified. And that's what these people are uh, in these other camps are saying, man. Oh, great millstone, the worst camp. Those guys make Israel look bad, so forth and so on, man. Hey, but the, the men of Great Millstone, more importantly, man, because that, 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 that's just the name. The men who are teaching the doctrine of the apostles of Great Millstone, man. 
those are the those men that endure and that continue in the teachings, man. They are, they, they were going to be delivered according to the promise or according to what's written. But it says, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed, man. You see? They're going to be ashamed, man. Let's go back. Wisdom of Solomon 5 and 6. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness have not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. What hath pride profited us? Or what good hath riches with our vaunting brought us? Right. Living your best life, the hot girl summers, man. We're going to see what that's going to bring in the end. All those things are passed away like a shadow and as a post that hasted by. And as a ship that passeth over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the keel in the waves. Right. When that ship moves, man, you don't see a trace of that ship in which direction it went. Well, it's going to be the same thing with these people in their hot girl summers. They live in their best lives. Right. All, all that is going to come to naught. Or as when a bird has flown through the air, there is no token of her way to be found. But the light air being beaten with the stroke of her wings and parted with the violent noise and motion of them as passed through. And therein afterwards, no sign where she went is to be found. Or like as when an arrow is shot at a mark, it part of the air, which immediately coming together again, so that a man cannot know where it, where it went through. Even so, we in like manner, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end and had no sign of virtue to show, but were consumed in our own wickedness, man. <laughs> right? That's why in second entrance, the Lord said, let's get that. It's the book of second entrance nine. And 21. And I saw and spared it greatly and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. And that's the elect, right? Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain and let my grape be kept and my plant. For with great labor have I made it perfect, man. You see that? I don't know why I keep doing that. I keep, keep thinking I'm changing apps. But uh, let's go back. Back in Wisdom of Solomon 5, verse 14. For the hope of an ungodly is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin froth that is driven away with the storm, like as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with a tempest, and passed away as the remembrance of a guest that tarried but a day. But the righteous live forevermore. Their reward also is with the Lord and the care of them is with the most high. Therefore, shall they receive a glorious kingdom and a beautiful crown from the Lord's hand. For with right hand shall he cover them and with his arm shall he protect them, man. You see, and that's what we're looking forward to, man. That's what we hope to be a partake of because these people, they're going to mourn at the end. It's the book of Second Edris 2. And... Verse 42, I Ezra saw upon the Mount Zion a great people. <laughs> that's that that's that great cluster, right? That's that great that the Lord is preserving, whom I could not number. And they shall, I'm sorry, and they all praise the Lord with songs. And John seen the same thing in Revelation, the seventh chapter, that innumerable multitude. You got the Christians that's thinking that, oh, that's, see, that's talking about. No, that's talking about Israelites that were scattered to the four corners of the earth. Sorry to bust your bubble. Verse 43, and in the midst of them, there was a young man of a high stature, taller than all the rest. And upon every one of their heads, he set crowns and was more exalted, which I marveled at greatly. So I asked the angel and said, sir, what are these? He answered and said unto me, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal. Meaning we forsook our lives here, man, as it is written in Colossians, the third chapter. If I would have read up earlier on, it says what? It says, uh, set thy affection on things in heaven, not on things on the earth. In Revelation, it says what? It says they, they, they love not their lives unto death, man. So we ain't got shit here. Fuck this place and everything in it, man. We looking forward for the kingdom to come. As it is written here, we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come, right? So we put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal. And when our Lord Yahweh Shah returns, it's going to happen in the physical. You see? Because right now we're doing it in the spirit. But it says... 
Uh, these be they that have put off the mortal clothing and put on the immortal and have confessed the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Now are they crowned and receive palms and palms is the victory, man. Matter of fact. I know it's Revelation 7. <laughs> it's Revelation 7 and 9. After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations. Here it says a tribe, nation, people group, right? The same nature or genus or genus, however you pronounce that. But it goes into Israelites, man, and kindreds, a tribe in the New Testament all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. You see that? And people, a people, people group, tribe, nation, all those who are of the same stock and language. <laughs> Ye men of the stock of Abraham, man. Right? And tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, which those palms represent the victory. Once again. And we have that victory through our Lord Yahweh Shah, according to 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, the 57th verse, on down to the 58th verse, man. We just got to continue in, in our faith, continue in our work, right? Let's go back. It says, verse 46, Then said I unto the angel, What young person is it that crowneth them and giveth them palms in their hands? Once again, the palms represent the victory, and we get the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shah. I quoted the precept, but I might as well just read it. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57, but thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, man. You see that? So through Yahweh Shah, we get this victory, man. Verse 47, so he answered and said unto me, it is the son of the heavenly father whom they have confessed in the world. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. Then the angel said unto me, go thy way and tell my people what manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy power thou hast seen, man. You see, so the Lord is going to come to the astonishment of all these unbelievers, man. And may we be found in his good graces, you know, so. Lord will, I hope this was edifying to Adi Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Barakha HaKwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel in truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Hey, Shalom.